Welcome to Lunacy Podcast. My name is Tony. I'm here with Dave and Dave, Dave Sterling, Dave Stevens, and I'm Tony Cobranzi. We are coming to you today from, not my garage, boys and girls, my basement, because it is way too flipping cold to be doing stuff in my garage. And we found out a couple weeks ago that my heater in my garage is very loud. Yeah. So we want to, you know, we're going to take it inside now. Um, of course, we're on BGN. Beautiful Game Network, bgn.fm. You can also find us on iTunes, Spotify, Sterling, help me out. SoundCloud. ITunes, SoundCloud, Sprecher. Spreaker. Spreaker. Um, um, then we got uh, iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio. And then obviously you can find us on a, on Twitter and we've got an Instagram account. And Facebook. Facebook. And our own webpage. And I'm not sure if I'm like everybody else, but I listen to my podcasts on Apple Podcasts, and yeah. certainly you can find us there. Yeah, that's where that's where I listen to us. Yeah, so find us everywhere. Um, of course, we are drinking delicious beers from local breweries, and today's big brewery is Dangerous Man Brewing, which Dave Sterling went to the other night, Friday night, yeah, and was uh, picked us up a bunch of beers. Yep. Um, you guys have had what beers are you guys drinking? Uh, um, I'll go first. Uh, the I have the Matchbox Coffee Porter, Ooh. and that's fantastic. Um, I mean, it smells like it smells like a can of coffee being opened. Mm. Um, it's super smooth. It's really dark. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm actually getting hints of that aroma from here. I don't know if Tony is. I can't, guys. Can't but, smell yet. But anyways, yeah, it yeah. smells delicious. Yeah, the head was really nice and creamy brown. It's it, it tastes like coffee. It's uh, got a good smoky porter, a little bit of bitter, not too much. Um, the hops are really low. Yeah, it's great. So that would be a good uh, morning at, at work beer. Yes, it's only 5%, 5.1%. Oh, so I could take, I mean, take that to work and drink that at work. Yeah. That'd be, yeah. Everybody think I was drinking coffee. Well, you would, from based yeah. on the smell, like I said. Yeah, it's, giddy it's, up. It's great. Uh, Dave, what are you drinking? I'm from Dangerous Man. I'm drinking the uh, Maple Vanilla Double Stout. And, oh. I mean, I think I say it every podcast. I'm a huge fan of stouts. Yes. And I'm actually a huge fan of Dangerous Man. I think I've been there, you know, probably five or six times. Wow. It was one of the first breweries in Minnesota that I went to hmm. before Surly even. Wow. Um, it was one of the early ones that I went to and kind of got started, you know, started my kick of uh, – craft beer loving but uh yeah this i love stouts but this is a double stout so it's i've never had this particular one before but yeah the maple vanilla is just it's delicious and just to put it in perspective you know it's a double stout so it's you know you would assume extra hoppy and i just had to look it up real quick um the ibu is 68 oh, now geez. to put that in perspective another one another stout that i've had there the chocolate milk stout that's at 26 ibu wow so it's actually more than double it's 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 a huge number for a stout so it's yeah, a little extra you know, hoppy i think um i think their ipas are even lower than that yeah i, yeah, I think yeah, they're I like 64 that. is the highest yeah yeah, and the uh, the ABV is a little high too it's at 8.5% uh, so holy G- you're not driving home tonight i'll have to sip this one a little bit yeah um i actually started with and because dave's a porter fan i had my sister-in-law get me the um i think it's the frost pack from surly which just came out and uh i'm drinking i was drank the liquid stardust sparkling ipa which you guys haven't had it fantastic ipa from surly tastes like an ipa but it's also tastes like a champagne you get that whole different feeling of it and then i moved on of course to a dangerous man boysenberry ms ipa and this stuff kids this is my I love sour beers. And a sour mixed with an IPA, that hits my hits a home run for me. You know, that's good stuff. So uh it's at five point eight percent, which isn't too bad. Yeah, um and uh it, it's good beer. Yeah, that's an oil can you're drinking out of that. It's an oil can, it's a big. crowler. It's a crowler. And uh, Dave was uh, nice enough to pick us up a bunch of uh, crowlers and uh what else? The crowler and what? What's the what's the other one called? Not a crowler. It's a howler. A howler. See, I didn't think there was three different levels. There's still a lot I need to learn here. Crowler, howler, and growler in that order of size. Yes, okay. a crowler, howler, growler. That's okay. what they have. And yep. most places only have the growlers. Some people have the the uh, howlers, and then some people have the crowlers. I it depends yeah, and on I, the brewery. I, and I wonder if it's certain beers, like for example, when you know we talked about it last last podcast, but like the 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 white noise 
white chocolate stout that I bought from Alloy. Mm-hmm. That was only available on a crowler. I, you know, I would have loved to take home a growler, but he said that was only available. And yeah. I think the reason they do that is because specialty beers, they don't want to run out of so fast. Okay. So filling a growler of it, they would run out of it like, sure. you know, that's so they're only giving you a little little bit. That know? makes sense. And I was, yeah. I honestly thought it might have had something to do with the alcohol alcohol content because I know that one is particularly yeah, that, high. But maybe that your point no, makes a little more sense. And they want to sell more of that yeah. and they want more people to have it, which is yeah. a good deal. Um, so <laughs> a couple of housekeeping things to talk about. I had a very uh, bad uh, last week. I was in a car accident. I was in a six-car pileup. Um, and, uh, of course, I'm okay, but my car, my Mazda 3, which I wanted to keep for my daughter, uh, is completely totaled. Uh, so I had to go buy a new car. Uh, so I had a bad last week. And then, uh, Sterling, you've had kind of a bad uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. Uh, you were a little sick. A little sick. A little... Apparently my, my body does not respond well to lots of thanksgiving day food yeah yeah mixed with multiple doubles of crown royal and also jack daniels but we, we talked about this before, when you came in when you walked in we talked about this you were saying that some people think that if you don't drink a certain brand of, if you drink a certain brand of whiskey or if you drink the cheaper brands of whiskey if you're used to the old brands you can get kind of sick yeah you know I, i've had a number of people I, i'm kind of a craft whiskey guy like craft mm-hmm. beer fan mm-hmm. i'm not a i've Never drink Crown, mm-hmm. rarely drink Jack. And so I've had a lot of people say, well, if you drink the really good stuff and then you go and get something cheap, your body doesn't always like, like it. that. Yeah. Do you think it's because of the impurities in the other, the cheaper ones, the lesser yeah. ones? Or I mean, it might saying, be. Yeah, yeah. You know, being that they're so mass produced, they, they probably cut corners mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was the it was the first time I had Crown in probably a couple of years. First time I had Jack in ages. Yeah. And, You're not um, blaming it on the turkey, though. No, I didn't have any turkey oh, this wow. year. What? Yeah. No turkey? I had ham. Are you American? It was bourbon ham. Bourbon ham? Well, it there's a problem good. right there. The bourbon and the whiskey and, and whatever. I, yeah. I'm, I'm speechless. I, I thought everybody had turkey. I That's didn't what I even thought. know you couldn't. I didn't even know you could have ham. I thought on it was like. I thought a cop came around and was like, Are you having turkey? Good, then you're fine. If you had ham, though, right. I thought you were. You know, and what's funny is uh, thir- or Wednesday morning on my way to work. I was driving down uh, West River Road, which is in Broken Park, and this yard had six turkeys just right hanging out in the front yard, and they were fighting each other. And I was like, I bet anything, they're playing to the death to see who's going to get eaten by that house. Yeah. (laughs) Because, I mean, they were just going at each other. I was just like, what in the world? And being it was the day before Thanksgiving, I was like, this is too too convenient. Turkey Fight Club. Yeah. Jimmy Christmas. Uh Dave Stevens, did you have any issues the last two weeks, or you've been good? Um, yeah, it's been a rough week for me too. I've I've been on vacation all week, so yeah. You I, son I, of a I, bitch. I, I got bored a couple of times. Oh, I slept Christmas. in too late, a, oh. at least a couple of the days. So yeah, oh. a rough week. So no, I'm not going to sit here and complain too much. Oh. All right. Well, you know. Um, so Dave Sterling and I have had a bad uh, week. Uh, Stevens has not had a bad week, so well, just. Two out of three, bad. I gotta, I gotta hit the road tomorrow though and travel hard. Where are you gonna work. go? I gotta go to Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. So <laughs> God's country, as my <laughs> uncle would put country. it. But uh, get a lot of freaking five miles yeah. on that one. It'll, yep, I'll be driving too, yeah, bright go. and early in the morning, working <laughs> hard all week. So don't feel too sorry for me. Um, so I do want to give a shout out to our French listeners. Um, there are some people in France who will be listening to this podcast. Um, I want to say hello to them. I'm not going to name who they are, but uh, I just want to say hi to our international listeners uh, in case they will be listening in the next week. Uh, So, uh, bonjour. Uh, Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay away from those riders. Yeah, watch out. Uh, And if you see a guy named Zidane in the street, don't get near him because he'll headbutt you right in the chest. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell we, we all saw a picture that John texted us. He was right in front of the French Soccer Federation. He didn't seem he didn't appear too happy in that photo. Yeah. No, he didn't. Not quite sure why. I was gonna say I, Dave, I was trying to keep it like I was trying to keep it like under the radar. But Technically it should be Jean. 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 Yes. Jean is in France with his fiance. Um, and, and Germany. And he's in Germany as well. 
Um, so he did take a picture in front of the French uh, soccer. Uh, what would you call that? It's uh, the what is it, the football federation? Yeah, the French, yeah. French football. Yeah. Federation. And you're right; he did not look happy at all. He yeah. looked very disgruntled. And as a German should in front of a French yeah. headquarters. Um, but uh, hopefully he'll listen to the pod in Germany and he'll have his uh, relatives listen to it. Yes. And they'll say, what the heck are these guys talking about? I believe this podcast is available world, worldwide. It is available it is. worldwide, but it's not in German. No. No, no translations no available. No translations available. Um, so as you guys all know, and we talked about this in the podcast last time, the loons aren't playing right now. Yeah. So... What we're going to talk about now is a little MLS playoffs. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit. We will talk Loon's offseason stuff uh, later on. Uh, but let's head into the playoff stuff. And uh, Dave Stevens, the stats guy, yes, I like to call him, he has all the playoff brackets, who's going where and how they're done. Yeah, so I mean, it, it, I guess I think we've all kind of been guilty of this. Uh, we ha- I have not watched enough of these MLS playoffs as no. I maybe normally would. Um, I, w- for whatever reason, other uh, commitments or other things going on, I just, I've kind of tuned in for a few minutes here and there when I had the chance, but I haven't seen a whole lot. So, mm-hmm. but I guess it is a good point because as we record this today in just an hour or two, the, the mm-hmm. uh, first leg of the both semifinals, okay. uh, West and East are going to kick off tonight, later tonight. And if you're wondering, so it's, it's sporting KC in the West versus Portland. Um, kind of much. To, I was kind of hoping for that uh, number five seed and six seed, the re- real Salt Lake versus Portland matchup. I thought that would have been kind of interesting been nice. in a weird way. But uh, you know, I guess one of my former teams that I'd root for, KC Sporting KC, is yeah. going against Portland. So, and then the, real quickly in the other uh, semifinal in the East, it's uh, the Red Bulls versus Atlanta United. So, which is what it's the one of the two. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, and, and it's literally the world cheering against the MLS favorite Mm -hmm. being everyone's cheering for Red Bulls against the jackasses from Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. So you got kind of, you got a kind of couple different series going on. Yeah. Like you said, the one versus two and uh, you know, even though the Red Bulls were down after the first leg, they came back with a three, nothing defeat in the second leg of their quarterfinal. So same with United or Atlanta United, although they had a one goal lead, they really turned it on in that second leg and Mm -hmm. scored three goals in that, uh, in that second leg to to advance, so that that they're coming in. The Red Bulls and Atlanta are coming in hot. So I mean, if you're looking for a good MLS playoff game, that you know that could be the one to watch tonight. I would say it could be. I mean, I think that's probably for me. That's the premier. Um, oh yeah. I mean, nothing against Sporting or Portland. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I think Red Bull has always been a a strong team, mm-hmm. and Atlanta, we all. Love it's Atlanta. So. Red Bull, it's New York, though, dude. I mean, yeah. one team from New York always has to be a good team in every sport. That's the way it works. Yeah. It's true. And I think, yeah, you had a good point, Dave. Um, I think, yeah, the New York Red Bulls, I think even when I'm back years ago when I was maybe just a casual fan at best of the MLS, it, was, it always felt to me like the New York Red Bulls were kind of like one of the faces yeah. of, of the league. If, mm-hmm. You know, that and maybe L.A. Galaxy. So it's, it is kind of in that – for the casual fan, I think it is nice to have them representing. And, mm-hmm. and I think the good news is for the unbiased fan, I'm not sure we're not, we're not totally unbiased here, but I think, I think the good news is there's a, a, definitely a good chance of Sporting KC coming out on top and facing either yeah. – you know, whether it's Atlanta yeah. or New York, I think it could be a very intriguing final to watch. And, of course, I, the final doesn't happen until uh, December 8th. Ugh. But the yeah, the, so I mentioned the second, the first leg is tonight, which happens to be the twenty fifth of November, and then the second leg of the semifinals happens on the twenty uh, ninth. Let's go back to the championship game happening. What December? December eighth. Yeah, I was at Thanksgiving. My uncle Jeff, uh, who listens to this podcast, um, he said he's like, well, now if the Loons were ever in the championship game, would they play a game here on December eighth? I said, well. Yeah, if they had, I think it's the best record. It is decided by that. The best record. Shield, right? Supporter yeah. Shield. Best record if they were in the championship. It would be-